Dr. Ezekwe, on the other hand, was one of Africa's original advocates for self-government. He was a graduate of Howard University in Washington, D.C., and a witness to racial inequality for Africans at home and in the diaspora. Upon his return to Africa, Azukwe settled in the Gold Coast and started his agitation in his writings in print media. He was charged with seditious libel, convicted, and deported to Lagos. Marcos Mosiah Garvey was born three years after the Berlin Conference of 1884 in St. Anne's Bay in Jamaica, in the Caribbean. Regarded as the father of black nationalism, Garvey was self-taught and agreed to become one of the greatest people Africa has ever produced. He advocated for the return of Africa by all people of African ancestry. He organized the largest mass movement the world has ever known, called the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA. He was also the first African, the first of African ancestry to own a shipping company named the Black Star Line. William Edward B. Du Bois was one of the most influential civil rights activists. A Pan-Africanist, a sociologist, historian, author, and edit editor. Proclaimed the father of Pan-Africanism, Du Bois was also the founding member of the Niagara Movement and later the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. He returned to Africa and became a citizen of Ghana while Nkrumah was still in power. Kwame Nkrumah at Lincoln University. While studying at Lincoln University in the United States, Nkrumah experienced the racial divide between blacks and whites. Juxtaposing his experiences in the United States with that of Africa, he found no difference. Africans he described as fetches of water and hewers of wood, and Africans in the diaspora as employees of the last resort. Implementing the ideas of his elders. With the ideas of Dr. Agri, Dr. Zikwe, Marcus Garvey, and W.E.B. Du Bois, Kwame Nkrumah knew he was fully armed intellectually to face European colonialism and imperialism. His first test was to co-organize a meeting of all people of African ancestry with W.E.B. Du Bois named the first, the fifth Pan-African Conference of 1945 in Manchester, England. It was well attended. Notables in, the con in, in attendance were Joe Makanyata and George Padmore. The fifth Pan-African Conference. Pan-Africanism is a collective effort and struggle by peoples of Africa and African ancestry for political, economic, social, and cultural emancipation. Nkrumah's leadership role in 1945 Manchester Conference put European powers on notice that their days in Africa were numbered. It also made the most, most visible political entity in the Gold Coast, then the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC, to recognize Kwame Nkrumah's organizational abilities and invited him to return home to help them agitate fully for self-rule. Nkrumah returns to the land of his birth. Upon an invitation by the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC, Kwame Nkrumah returned to, then, to the then Gold Coast to assume the position of Secretary General of the organization in 1947. He took a tour around the country or the colony Campaigning for self-rule, Pan-Africanism became a slogan for freedom. Workers of European goods were encouraged 
Labor strikes were common as well as work slowdowns. World War II veterans demand benefits. On February 28, 1948, World War II veterans marched to Christenburg Castle, the citadel of power in the capital Accra, with the intention of submitting a petition to Governor Gerald Creasy. The petition was for the governor to address poor conditions, including unpaid war benefits and neglect. When the veterans were ordered to disperse, they refused. The British officers opened fire on the unarmed veterans. Three veterans were killed, triggering routes and looting across the colony. Matters of African Revolution. No struggle is worth anything without a sacrifice. Crispus Attux lost his life and ignited the Boston Tea Party and the American Revolution. Sergeant Ajete, Corporal Lamte, and Corporal Atipo lost their lives and ignited positive action and the African Revolution. With their blood spilled, freedom for the Gold Coast was a foregone conclusion. Riots erupted across the land. European businesses were looted. The lawlessness forced Governor Creasy to declare a state of emergency. Arrest of the Big Six. The Christenberg Crossroad route shooting led to the Riot Act. A removal order was issued by Governor Gerald Creasy for the arrest of six members of the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. They were Dr. Ebenezer Akwaije, Edward Akufadu, William Oforieta, Dr. Joseph Boche Dankwa, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and Emmanuel Odakwe Obit Silamte. Differences in political thought. In 1949, Nkrumah had reached the conclusion that the executive members of the UGCC had accepted the desires of European powers for Africans to wait patiently for limited political concessions and better career opportunities. The gulf was so wide, Nkrumah could not acquiesce to or compromise with. Edged on by his supporters, Nkrumah resigned from his position as Secretary General of the UGCC. The Convention People's Party. Nkrumah immediately founded the Convention People's Party, CPP, in June of 1949, a vanguard for the struggle for political independence. With the slogan, self-government now, Nkrumah set out as a political actor to demand from the British colonial masters to grant independence, independence to the colony. Self-government now was followed by positive action, which almost paralyzed business activities in the colony. Launching positive action. In December 1949, Nkrumah launched positive action to demand a fixed date for the colony to be granted independence. Nkrumah then put the British on notice that the weapons of positive action will come to bear. The weapons of positive action were as follows. Legitimate political agitation, newspaper and educational campaigns, and as a last resort, the constitutional application of strikes, boycotts, and non-cooperation. Nkrumah as a political prisoner. After his de declaration of positive action and the lingering anger against the British for the murder of Sergeant Ijete, Corporal Lamte, and Corporal Atipo, 
The masses took the law into their own hands and engaged in civil disobedience. Routes and looting provoked the British colonial masters to hold Kwame Nkrumah fully responsible. Nkrumah was arrested the second time and put in James Fort prison. The election that delivered freedom to Africa. Stalling for time, the British kept on pushing the goalposts back each time the CPP won an election. However, the February 1951 election in which Kwame Nkrumah won his seat in Accra Central without campaigning left the British no choice but to release him from prison to take his seat in Parliament. Thanks to the Ghana people who did not allow tribalism to blur their vision and voted massively, 22,780 votes out of 23,122 for Kwame Nkrumah and Nzima. Nkrumah becomes leader of government business. As leader of government business, Kwame Nkrumah was a de facto head of state, or as a de facto head of state, resisted the calls for regionalism and federalism and created a unitary government. In so doing, he brought four ethnic-based administrative regions of Ashanti, the Gold Coast Colony, Northern Territories, and Transvolta Togoland under a central authority. The first positive legacy of Kwame Nkrumah was national unity. Fee free education for all. Nkrumah, relying on his early influence from Dr. Agri, believed that the best protection of freedom and liberty was from education. In his capacity as leader of government business, Kwame Nkrumah managed to put education, one of his public policy bills, through the Gold Coast Legislature in 1951. The word went across the nation that every child of school-going age must attend classes. The 1956 election, one step to freedom. Kwame Nkrumah CPP won the 1956 election freely and fairly. The CPP won 71 seats out of 104 seats. Having pushed the goalposts back several times over, the British and the opposition had run out of space. A date had to be set for the transfer of power from Britain to Kwame Nkrumah and the people of Ghana. The date agreed upon was March 6, 1957. Ghana is the name. The name Ghana is deeply rooted in an ancient African history, especially in the history of western portion of Africa known as the Western Sudan. It kindles in the imagination of modern African youth, the grandeur and the achievement of a great medieval civilization which our ancestors developed many centuries before European penetration and subsequent domination of Africa began. Komo Kuma, May 18th, 1956, addressed to the Legislative Assembly in Accra. This is the colors, the flag of Ghana, red for the blood that we shed, fighting for our independence, gold for our, our riches, and green for the land and the vegetation with the invisible star in the middle of the goal. The invisible star. There's only the chosen people in the world who can find that invisible star in the sky. 